Hello, beach friends. I love the beach. I do so very much, but I have to admit, some trips are just a little bit more fun than others. And today is one of those super fun trips. So I have left the comfort of the West Coast and got up at four o'clock in the morning to drive across the state and make it over to Juno Beach so that I could do a little bit of shelling over there. The tide was just right, a little bit low. And I have to admit, as soon as I got there, I said, hey, I'm gonna like this place. They are already encouraging you to clean up the beach. So I'm pretty excited. I've been up for a while. The birds are singing. Literally, the birds are singing and I am really excited to get down and share this experience with you. Now, I did see some things that I expected to see. I did see some things that were brand new to me and I saw something that made me go completely out of my mind. It was absolutely amazing and fun and I cannot wait to share it with you. So, if you are ready to see what the East Coast has in store for us today, Let's go to the beach. Well, first off, I'm super happy to be finding seashells because not all East Coast beaches have seashells. The last time I went to the East Coast, well, it was challenging. I feel like I drove across the state to get a hamburger bean and see a man of war. Here though, all right, I see a little bit of that seaweed, not those massive patches that they were talking about. And phew. All right, yay, there's shells here. All right, I can make this work. We're gonna have ourselves a good time. I love these spectral bittersweets. That was something I was hoping to find when I came over here. So yes, at least I'll at least be picking those up. And I could not get over this water. It's so flat. It's like the West Coast. This is what I'm used to, just, just very, calm waters. Now I'm here because the low tide is at 9.53 in the morning. So right now it's about seven, it's almost 7.30 in the morning. So <laughs> I've had quite a morning already. I've been up since, I don't know, four o'clock in the morning. So I'm here, not tired. I am absolutely energized to come see what is at this beach. Oh, hi, lady in waiting Venus clam. Aren't you pretty? So that's one of the clams that I will find on the west coast but happy to see you here love the name of that lady in waiting venus clam and then the can does this look like candy to anybody else i mean they just look like candy to me so those are these are called spectral bittersweets and they are super duper common look at this one so this is called a giant bittersweet so i am on the market for both those spectral bittersweets as well as this giant bittersweet so like I said, I'm here for two seconds and I'm finding things, so I'm delighted. That's a piece of a sand dollar. Don't think that that is our five-hole keyhole. Perhaps it's one of those arrowhead sand dollars. They're a little more hardy. Yay, another spectral bittersweet. Oh, look at this. A little false limpet. I don't know exactly what kind. Um, there's one in my book, but there's only one. So I do know that it is a false limpet, but I don't know what kind. Kind of neat though. A little false limpet. Okay, another. Yeah, I'm gonna end up probably gonna concentrate. They are, those, these shells are here, the spectral bittersweets, but I'm probably gonna concentrate on the ones that have just like a lot of cool markings on them. Okay, that's the giant bittersweet. And I know it's just a little one. Hopefully, well, I'll get one that's on the giant side. That would be cool. A mossy arc. So it's one of the shells in the arc family, the mossy arc. Neato. 
Oh, oh, that would have been cool if it wasn't broken. That's a sundial. Don't get those on my coast, on the West Coast. That's called a sundial. I know it's broken. I'm keeping it anyway just because I don't ever get to see it. So that's part of the things that's kind of exciting for me is just seeing things that I don't normally see. I, I really don't know. My best guess on that scallop is that is a yellow spot scallop. There are many, many, many kinds of scallops. That's my best guess. I do think it's a little discolored. I don't, don't know for sure. Oh, all right. My detective senses are telling me that that is a piece of a lion's paw. Lion's paws are one of those like bucket list shells. Yeah just a little piece now that is so tiny i'm not going to keep it if it was a little bit bigger i might consider it well would you look at that that is a red brown arc and i'm kind of seeing the resemblance between this and the mossy arc hmm hmm now this is a lucene and uh, there's the Pennsylvania Lucene and then the thick Lucene. Now this one's got the little like bubbles on the interior of the shell. So I'm going to go thick Lucene on that one. So I'm pretty sure that's what that is. So I am here at low tide. I cannot get over how calm the water is. And you will see it's not like there's piles and piles of seaweed. There's a little bit of seaweed, but it's not like crazy. That's a beautiful common auger. Because I'm in the water, I'm gonna be a little careful. There's no hitchhikers or critters in there. So, oh, look at the little kitten paw. Okay, I'll be careful with that. I'll hold on to that too. See a little auger and little kitten paw. Would you look? I mean, this is crazy. This is not. This is fabulous. Fabulous to see a nice calm waters and a bunch of little seashells. Super happy. Next up, a thorny oyster. Fantastic. All right. It's not quite as thorny, kind of like the uh, spiny jewel box. It will have its like little appendages on top of the shell kind of growing all over the place. Well, at least I got two little horns on it, kind of like a, so that is a thorny oyster. Here's another oyster that is a frond oyster kind of neat the first time i found just a piece of it i do love how zigzaggy the edges are they're like wavy just neat a neat wavy oyster oh a little arc a little zigzag arc known as a turkey wing that is a really great example of a turkey wing if i do say so myself hello little turkey wing oh aren't you cute now yet yeah, it's a scallop it's small it's pink and white. Mm, maybe it's a calico. Maybe. I don't know. Don't know. I'm out of my element here. So I know some things, some things I'm hunting for, some things I know I'm hoping will be here. And then other things will be a little bit of a mystery. Here is another one of those false limpet. And then a little spectral bittersweet. So about this time, you know, I've been here for a little bit and one, I'm like, oh, yay, I'm getting to see other things, you know, that I'm here. I'm seeing the, the spectral bittersweets, the giant bittersweets, and it's just also kind of driving home for me. My regular beaches are pretty awesome. So Southwest Florida, I do have to admit, we have some pretty seriously awesome shelling beaches. And I know in the summer it's a little bit slower anyway. I wanted to see something different. So we came over to the East Coast so I could pick up an East Coast broad ribbed Cardita versus one on the West Coast. So that is a broad ribbed Cardita. Again, just look at this experience something different. Another frond oyster, a very wavy frond oyster. Neato. A lettered olive. Yeah, so find myself in the water, just checking that out, see what's down here. Got myself a lettered all, and they make them, well, they're just bigger and thicker over here on the East Coast. That is a giant bittersweet. You can kind of see the markings ever so slightly. Unfortunately, eh, I'm probably not gonna keep that. It doesn't have like, you know, like the rich coloring on it. So I do know it's a bittersweet. It's bittersweet, the color's not better, but while I'm over here, let's get this Nathan's hot dog packaging. Disgusting. Get that out of the water. 
Yep. We'll go ahead and remove garbage over here as well. Another piece. All right, that is a piece of a thorny oyster. And another one. Oh, that one's a pretty good one. I think I'll hold on to that second one. That first one's a little broken, but that one's got a little bit of ridges on it. Nice color. Nice orange. That And they'll come in orange, yellow, like a brick red color. Those thorny, thorny oysters. Isn't that pretty? I like that. A little bit of yellow. So once again, another thorny oyster. Those are probably quite exquisite if you could get them before they've been bashed and battered until they're kind of flat. Well, would you look at that? A gastropod. All right. So that is looking like a tinted cantharis to me. Yep, that's what I think that is. So we have ourselves a tinted cantharis. Kind of cool. Another spectral bittersweet. Oh, look, just like candy. Kind of cool. It has a line like right down the middle. So I'm just, you know, really kind of entertaining myself with these different patterns on these different shells. In addition to kind of just looking for something different. So I'm going to mosey on down the beach and be quiet and let you have some beach time. kind of neat. It's obvious that it's organic. It's very pearlized. It was just neat because the base color is kind of like that, as you can tell, it's kind of like a pink color, but then there's a little, it just was pretty. It was pretty. It was on the beach. I'm going to keep it. <laughs> oh, a calico clam. Well, hi there, calico clam. All right, so I'm doing, you know, I am saying hi to a couple things I normally say hi to. Oh, but a couple of new things like the giant bittersweet. So nice mixture of things that I was kind of expecting to see and some new things. This is a kitten paw. Too bad you weren't a lion's paw. But nope, just a little kitten's paw. Terrific. Oh, and then this. This is a crossbarred Venus clam shell. It is the most common shell on my usual beaches, on Southwest Florida beaches. And I just find it interesting to compare that next to the Spectral Bittersweet, which really kind of seems to be the shell that's all over the place on the East Coast. So you got West Coast on the left, East Coast on the right, just common, common shells. Hello, auger. I know, technically your name is a common auger, but I think you're really pretty. Beautiful looking common auger. Right, next up, oh, another bittersweet. And I was looking forward to that. I do know that that's something to look forward to coming on over to the East Coast. So where there was, I guess, technically, there was probably a couple things that I was really kind of hoping I would see. And I was thinking about my friend Brian over at Solace and Shelling. If you don't follow his channel yet, why don't you go ahead and head over there and subscribe because he does a lot of fun shelling too. So he had posted this picture and I noticed it was Southeast Florida shells but I lasered in on that Imperial Venus clam right there and so I said to Brian up oh, you were in Southeast Florida again weren't you and I even mentioned I have yet to find an Imperial Venus clam super jelly so just setting up this next shot I had been thinking about that particular shell just the day before so can you imagine my delight when I saw it I literally finally oh my gosh and now for the first time I'm gonna get to touch one. Oh my gosh so that my friends I've never found one that is an imperial venus clam I had been dying to find one that is the cool oh my gosh I'm freaking out right now freaking out that is so cool it's got all its little lines in it and it, it looks puffy and I gotta bring it down to the water and wash it off and marvel at it and oh it's so neat look at all the little ridges on it oh yep 
So for me, this was a big deal. This was, I was kind of thinking about the shell. I saw it, I got to touch it. So this is my first Imperial Venus clam encounter. Man, that was cool. So now I'm pumped. Now I'm like, you know what? Bring it on. I don't care. I found an Imperial, Imperial Venus clam. That is a chestnut turban. Beautifully beaded shell, but Honestly, I'm still thinking about the Imperial Venus claim. I am, but I'm happily collecting these giant bittersweets. Those are both giant bittersweet clams. Oh, and another. So that's another sundial. No, it's not great. Not, you know, it's a little broken, a little discolored, but still, I never, ever, ever get to pick them up. So still kind of neat. Probably going to hold on to that since I have most of the shell. I'll probably hold on to it. All right, let's look at, all right, a little bit bigger, a little bit bigger than those like dime sized shells, but a giant bittersweet. Isn't that pretty? Beautiful, beautiful shell. And look at that. And yep, I saw that one too. Look at that. So these are also chestnut turbans. It seems very random to me, right? All just, all right. Fantastic, beautiful chestnut turbans. And what is this? Oh, I think that's a corrugate jewel box. I think. There's actually a lot of different jewel boxes. Mm-hmm. I'm thinking it's a jewel box. Maybe I don't know what kind. I'm keeping it anyway. Just kind of neat. And this was definitely neat. It's like multi-part. So we do have a frond oyster. That's kind of the base. And then we have this worm shell or worm snail has kind of attached itself to the frond oyster. I just thought that was kind of cool. So nature did a little uh, construction, some shell construction. I thought that was neat. So I'm gonna hold on to that. Now the frond oysters are typically kind of hold on to um, soft corals and sea fans and things like that. Get me. Yay, there's so many shells. All right, I can make this work. All right, what do we see? So it's mostly the spectral bittersweets, but I do find like once I kind of get down and take a peek, that's when I'm kind of seeing the other stuff kind of pop out to me. Oh, I see it. No. Yes. Another one. So I wonder if it was at about this time that I was like, oh my gosh, I don't know really what they look like from the bottom. What if I've been passing them and I, oh, how many I must have passed? <gasps> well, what are you gonna do? I'm just tickled pain. Yeah, th th I'm checking. All right, are there any other ones here before I go down to the water and oogle over my second Imperial Venus Clam? All right, I marked my spot. Get back down there. Oh, look at this one. Now this one doesn't appear to have quite as many ridges as that first one. But again, for me, now in some areas, I know that these are super common, not a big deal. To me, it was a very big deal. I had just been, been thinking about this particular shell and then I kind of come to the beach and find it. So yeah, I'm tickled. I am tickled. Another giant bittersweet. I will likely pick up every single one that's sort of decent, got a little bit of color, good, good shape. I'm probably gonna pick it up. Giant bittersweet. Oh, I know what you are. You're just a piece of a fighting conch. Yeah, just a piece of a Florida fighting conch. Oh, <gasps> no way. And it's, it's whole, holy cow. So that my friends is a lion's paw. Now, mm, it's definitely not in mint condition as we can tell, but for me, I really like that it's whole. I know it's a little discolored, but it's whole. It's the whole shell. So I'm pretty thrilled with that. So that is a lion's paw, like bucket list shell number two. Oh, in the background, I did see that little giant bittersweet. I picked that up as well. So yeah, down to the water, wash it off. See if there's any of that color is really gonna come out. And I will tell you, I did spend a little time really trying to clean it up. No, nope, that's pretty much, I was able to get some of that white things off of it, but that's the way that 
that shell ended up. I know Kitten's Paw, not as exciting. Sorry, it's just not as exciting as the Lion's Paw. So that is the Kitten's Paw. And this, I was kind of, yeah, look at that. It almost looks like, looks like it shouldn't be there, right? But that is a leafy jewel box. It's a little broken. Isn't it pretty though? The color, I can't get over that. So that's a little leafy jewel box. So it has been a beautiful morning. I'm having myself a fantastic time. I thought I was just gonna have to, you know, wander around picking up bittersweets, but no, I got myself some bucket list shells. So now, thank you. Thank you, Juno Beach. What else are we gonna discover here? Oh, a piece of sea glass. Awesome. Not all glass that we find down here is gonna be, you know, sea glass sometimes. It's just the garbage. But that is a lovely piece of sea glass. And that is another red brown arc. And like I said, I picked up that mossy arc and I, yeah, you know, you really do kind of remind me of your friends in the arc family. So here we do have the family called family, it's Arcaday. And we have, you see here, your turkey wing over here, your red brown arc over here, and your mossy arc. So technically, yes, they really are in the same family of shells, the arcs. Bittersweet, a giant bittersweet. And I, I don't know, you know, I found maybe two, three of those on my, on the, on the West Coast, but just don't get them that often. And that's what just makes your brain happy. Different things, sea glass, I don't, you know, I encounter glass once in a while, but just different things. I'm loving it. Oh, hey, what are you doing? So I found a ghost crab, just kind of hanging out. Now, ghost crabs are nocturnal. Typically, they kind of do their business at night. Oh, so that is a little ghost crab and they do need to go back and forth to the water to wet their gills. Get a better look at you, your hairy legs. All right, that's it. it Critter is just going to kind of stare at us and kind of wander off. So we've seen a couple recently. They will, they have little um, holes in the sand. That's where these little ghost crabs will live. Still keep an eye on me. Not to worry, buddy. I'm going to leave you alone. So another ghost crab just blends right in. All right. Excellent. Got to see a critter too. Now, I also ran into a woman that said, and I didn't know that you can find shark teeth here. So I abruptly found some black stuff, really just to kind of remind myself, I cannot look for shark teeth and shells. I just, I can't do it. Just my brain just kind of needs one or the other. So it was kind of neat to know that it was here. So the next time I come, because I will be coming back, I'll look for shells and the shark teeth. And with any luck, the next time I come, we will also have these delightful giant bittersweet clams. Lovely. Oh, and a jingle. Yep, little baby's foot or jingle shell. Neato. What was that? Oh, and the coral. Now this is also thin fingered coral. That I do recognize. Some coral that I get on my beaches. And that is a nice little piece of coral. Neato. And more glass. We got... No, that's sea glass. Not garbage. Glass. Oh, terrific. I'm having so much fun. Now, I have been looking for you, shiny auger. So there's a couple of different augers. Sally's auger is one of them. And then this, the shiny auger. I literally have been looking for it. Never found one. So this is the first time I'm finding one. You see the common auger on the left. And those are more like a cone where the shiny auger on the right is more like a bullet. Like it kind of tapers at the bottom again. So that's a new shell for me. Juno Beach, you are being so nice. Oh, no way. Yeah, my heart's racing. I'm like, no way, it's number three. Oh, it's so pretty. I love, they look puffy, right? They kind of, they're not, but they look puffy. 
the Imperial Venus Clam. Now those, just the, by the design, they have a much better shot of not getting drilled into because they're so thick and because they have such a lumpy shell like that. The Imperial Venus Clam. Man, that clam is making me happy. Not that you weren't thorny oyster. You are lovely as well, but I kind of just really was had a hankering for one of those Imperial Venus clams. Whoa, big chestnut turban. Big, big, big turban. Wow. So, yep, got ourselves a chestnut turban. Awesome. Oh, more garbage. Terrific. We'll put that with a Nathan's hot dog container. Get that off the beach. All right. What else do you know? I'm going to walk back up to the pier. What else between here and there are we going to discover? What's it going to be? Oh, oh, out there was like a sea, um, like a sea school. See those floats out on the right? There were kids. It was like a, a, you know, like a day camp of sorts. It looked like a lot of fun. I, it, it looked like a lot of fun. <gasps> no way. Oh, Imperial Venus Clam. Oh, oh, that would have been terrible. Oh, <gasps> what if you had been sucked back out to sea? Oh, that would have been so awful. Luckily, you and I are together and I'll put you with your other friends. Oh, look at how many wonderful little lumps you have on you with those straight lines. And oh, you're so awesome. Yep, another Imperial Venus clam. I'm thrilled. I'm humming. I'm so happy. And I got a broken one. And I kept that one too. And I also kind of just thinking the way that the shell was building. You can see that it builds on top and it just kind of grows and gets bigger in the layers. Yep. Thank you. Thank you, Juno. You're awesome. And another lettered olive, which is also awesome. I'm just not going to go quite as crazy because I've seen those before. A lovely lettered olive. <gasps> oh, Juno, you shouldn't have. Well, okay, fine. Thank you. Oh, and really at this point, I'm like, oh man, how many other ones did I miss? Oh, who cares? Oh, it's so puffy and awesome and yeah. It's so fun finding brand new shells. It really is. But that's not to say like fan favorites are kind of like my, my hometown shells. The auger, you are fun to find as well. The brown pelicans, they have a calm day today. Normally I imagine that they're battling waves, but it's, it was just a very unusual day. Very, very calm. I did come on purpose when the tide was coming out. So that was on purpose. So I picked a great day to come. <gasps> Are you kidding me? No way. Another? Okay, fine. Yeah. yeah. I. It was so fun. Another Imperial Venus clan. Yep, really, really fun. And just especially because I kind of had them on the brain. Like I was just thinking about them the day before. So lots of different things I think about when I'm wandering around the beach, believe me. And one of them is how very grateful I am that I have people that come with me virtually walking on the beach and that also monetarily support me. Thank you. Thank you so much for helping me you know, pay to drive across the state and do things like this. It was super duper fun. And it's really just nice to see something very different. It was much calmer than I thought it was going to be, but I will definitely, definitely be back. So the one last kind of look over my shoulder at the beach, man, that was fun. But like I said, I will definitely be back. I think next time I'm going to try winter time. So I did remove a little bit of garbage from the beach, 3.45 ounces. So in total, I've removed a little over 36 pounds of garbage from the beaches. I figure every little bit counts and holy cow, here's everything else. And I had so much fun. The spectral bittersweets. I was happy to even see those. Frankly, I could have just picked those up the whole time. That would have been fine, but I got lucky and also got some of those sundials. Did see a calico clam, some of those thorny oysters, which was cool. The lady in waiting Venus clams. Looks like I got a couple scallops, the frond oysters. Looks like one jingle, that, uh, that questionable jewel box, the red brown arcs, the mossy arcs. The giant bittersweets, there was one uh, slipper in there, some broad rib carditas, kitten paws. I said giant bittersweets, I think. The turkey wing, the olives, that piece of questionable prettiness. 
the lion paw, the piece of coral, the uh, false limpets, but the imperial Venus clams stole the show for me. I was literally thinking about them the whole way home. I couldn't wait to come home and wash them off and touch them again. And now they're in my special box. Holy cow, that was fun. All right, next week, I don't, we're going to Sanibel. And I'm just going to say, I'm going to let my sense of humor lead the way next week. So we'll leave it at that. I hope you have yourself a great week and I'll see you again next Sunday.